Hey guys, I'm Phoenix here with another, well, not a tutorial, tutorial, if that makes any sense, probably not, but hey, um, yeah, I've been a bit quiet recently, um, Minecraft and all sorts of other stuff sort of getting in the way, uh, there will be a Frozen Skies update on Tuesday, um, there will be, definitely, I'm not going to drop out of this, of doing it this, this week, um, if there isn't one, you 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 feel free to poke me endlessly until I actually release one. So, um, as you can see, I'm in Source, and as you can see, I'm in TF2. Now, recently, um, Three Clicks Philip has started releasing CS:GO tutorials. Now, Source is exactly the same, no matter which engine you're in. There may be a few differences in uh, like graphics qualities and things like that, but the core mapping um, procedures are exactly the same. So this is a video that I hope will change a few um, messages that Three Clicks put forwards in a couple of his videos recently. Um, the two things we're going specifically we're going to be covering is hollow and no draw. Specifically, don't use no, don't use hollow, and no draw is not the cure all that some people think it to be. So uh, let's get on and go into hollowing. So hollow. Now hollow and carve share very similar characteristics in that they were both designed for Quake I think um, seeing as Hammer's basically built off the Quake editor this is Quake 1 we're talking about here so parts of Hammer are quite old and Carve and Hollow are horrific um, for optimization uh, now I'm sure people will be saying well it's just a quick thing you know it's just a quick thing for testing we'll just make a box and hollow it well if you're doing just a quick box use the cordon tool it does exactly the same thing as hollow um, and it's half as complicated really you don't even need to click anything really you uh, you click on that one there and then you draw you have this box here and you put it around your map like so make sure that, that it's completely completely around your map and then you un then you click that one hold on. and then you hit to enter hold on. now there it is just hit anything and it will deselect it and once it's deselected that's the cordon and you'll have this red box around it which means your cordon's on you can use it for testing things out, loading specific areas of the map, and it's a whole lot easier than dealing with hollow and then, you know, having hollow and then do you remove it, make it into a skybox, what do you do with it? So, um, cordon's better for testing, and then when you're ready to make your actual skybox, actually make a skybox, six brushes, tight around the map as you can, uh, lining up with one another, job done, don't hollow. No point to it. So the powers that be say that no draw is a complete cure for your optimization needs. It isn't really, uh, for one specific reason. Hammer is actually quite clever. I know it doesn't look like look it. Uh, it's very very old. Um, but it is actually quite clever. So if there is a face that the player isn't going to be able to see because it's in the void, for example, Hammer basically turn, uh, it's, becomes a null face anyway, which is what No Draw does. It tells the compiler to make it to don't bother uh, don't bother to render it. And so yeah, if the for example this face here, um, the compiler can see that it's touching the void. The player's not going to be able to see it it's going to make it a no draw anyway. The other thing it does, things like this, so this brush here, there's no point in this this face here being no draw because it is touching 
and is completely being covered by another brush. And the compiler, as I said before, is quite clever. It sees that and it makes it a no draw. The only places that you should be using no draw might be in areas where the player isn't going to be able to see it, but they might, but it might be rendered at some point. Like the top tops of roofs or say you had a door here that couldn't be opened in a window, you might then uh, no draw that face there. Um, it's anything that might be rendered but the player won't be able to see. There is no point in making your entire map out of no draw and then texturing it afterwards. I don't. I use dev textures because it's really... Uh, the orange dev texture specifically, if, when you're in in-game, you can see if something hasn't been textured because it's bright orange. Um, you can't necessarily see if something's been not been textured. You know, if it's something's no draw in game, um, it might be covered by another brush or whatever. Uh, it's not as easy to notice something that's been no drawed in game compared to a bright orange dev texture. So no draw, no real, real point to it. There are, you know, there are areas where it is useful to do, but I will say this: no drawing your map um, in places where the player isn't going to see it. Um, it isn't going to be the cure that people say it is. Uh, it will gain you maybe a frame or two in game, and maybe a couple of seconds off the comp compile time. It won't save you hours, for example. That thing is that's sort of more down to things like funk details, um, your vis clusters, your area portals, hints, skips, the lot. That's more the whole idea of optimization, and some of the optimization will come from making sure you've got a nice tight skybox around your map and not using carve and hollow everywhere. So there's my tutorial, not a tutorial thing, and I will and I will see you on Tuesday.